The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 17th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question... But you can't dial in. You can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got a mixed bag out there. You got the Dow off 22, the S&P down 8, the Nasdaq's off 93. The Russell's up 19, the semis are off 43, the Trinity's up 130, and you've got gold up uh, 2 bucks, silver's up 25 cents, light to be crude up 33 pennies, natural gas back 3 cents, the 30 treasury down 1 point, and 5 ticks, she's printed out at 110.06. Leading the charge dollar-wise, the upside service now, about 17 bucks or 3%. Decker's outdoor, 16 bucks, 3%. MicroStrategy, 10 bucks. 3%. On link holdings, about 10 bucks, 65%. United rentals up about 1.5%. That's a $7 move. To the downside, it's Broadcom off 2 and 7 tenths percent, 25 buckaroonies. NVIDIA, 23 bucks or 5%. VMware, 13 bucks, 7%. Eli Lilly, 10 bucks, nearly 2%. And KLA Corp down about 2%. That's an $8.50 move to the downside. We've got movers and we've got shakers. Where do we want to begin? Let's go begin with the equity future contracts out here. Let's switch over. We'll take a look at daily and weekly just to update you make sure everybody is on board here with what's being communicated to both you and i if we take a look at the es mini upper left hand side is formed a buy the d point pattern did so back here on october 4th right now we just have price consolidating with inside its profile it's in a sell zone, and that says uh, that's between 43.72 and 44.30. We take a look at the now, now look at the daily time frame. You got a bottom on the week on the daily. You have a bottom on the weekly. It's a Gartley buy. The only way that gets negated is a close below 42.35.50. The issue for the ES Mini has been that 44.24 level. That's the bottom of that weekly profile. That's the level the price has got to get back inside if there's going to be any legs to this bounce. The NQ, daily time frame, TD9 count bottom, weekly time frame, just price testing a swing point that is held. So no weekly bottom per se other than the swing point holding out here. You've got a profile that uh, and prices above its oscillator and change line in the NQ. As long as it remains above 15, let's call it 15,100, we should see 15,468. You get below 15,100, then we could be looking to move back to 14,676. In the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, also a buy the D point pattern on the daily time frame. If we take a look at what's also going on in the daily time frame, it's running right up into those sellers. They sit at the top of that profile. Profile. They're sitting at 34,167. If price can close above it, then we'd be looking at a move up to the 35,357-ish area. In the case of Russell, on the weekly time frame, still waiting for a bullish reversal candidate to confirm a weekly bottom pattern. The Russell 2000's daily time frame, yesterday completing a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. We had that uh, signal that was triggered the day before. Bullish reversal candle yesterday. Bullish structured profile. Price should make its way up towards 1824. Of course, there's resistance. Up at the 1802 level. So 1802 to 1824 is its target. The weekly says, hey, wait a minute, Stevie. 
I've got a TD9 Cal bottom. It only gets negated with a close blow 17, 20, 70. And I'd say, right, you are. And what this should do is just to take price up to that 1834 level. So overall, you've got a nice bullish move here in the uh, Russell out there. It's the strongest of the four equity future contracts as we speak. And it's the one that generated that bottom signal yesterday. Okay, let's move off of this and let's move over and take a look at what's going on in the currency world out here. So we'll close out these charts, just free up some resources. Not sure what's going to pop back up. That's not where we're going to go just yet. Let's go to the euro, the yen, the pound. And here's we take a look at the euro. Again, we got the daily up top and we got the weekly down below. If you take a look at the down below, the weekly, you got a TD9 cal bottom that completed last week. That should take price up to 107.24. If, in fact, that unfolds, U.S. dollar index will get weak. If you see a weekly close below 104.48, that tells you the euro is toast, French toast, or well, not really. Well, it could be French toast and would be likely headed to 97 cents out there. If we take a look at the uh, Japanese yen, Japanese yen has a Rhodes momentum indicator top. It's also got a TD9 count top. That makes 156.10 that key threshold level that if closed above would suggest that the yen wants to get weaker and the U.S. dollar getting stronger. We can see over the last three weeks, it's just been a sideways move out there, even with the TD9 count and Rhodes momentum indicator top. In the case of the Great British Pound, much like the euro, uh, yesterday on its daily time frame, finding support at its red oscillator and change line. It has a buy the D point pattern out here, and this should take price up to the 1.250 level. It's also got a weekly TD9 count bottom. 1.243 is its price target. If, in fact, the pound does what it's supposed to do, that should put some weakness inside the U.S. dollar index. Right now, all three of the major currencies that make up 83 percent of the U.S. dollar index are suggesting we should see a weakening U.S. dollar, stronger euro, stronger pound. Maybe we're going to see a stronger yen. That one's kind of uh, out there. But, you know, the real key numbers because of those TD9 counts, even the U.S. dollar, by the way, also that would make sense, right, had a TD9 count. And that level to be watching the U.S. dollar index is 1.0705. That's off of the December contract. We close above that. The U.S. dollar index will get stronger and continue to move higher out there. So that's what's going on with the dollar. That's what's going on with the uh, primary currency pairs, the equity markets out there. Let's go before we get into the break. Uh, let's just go over to this chart here. This chart here is taking a look at Goldilocks, silver, and the GDX. Now, gold, I've got the weekly up as well as the daily. And the daily, you've got a beautiful TD9 count bottom. This suggests that price should go target 1953.20. If it does go target 1953.20 over the next couple of days, we could easily get a TD9 count top. So let's pay attention to that. If we take a look at the weekly time frame, yeah, last week we confirmed a Gartley buy pattern. The issue here for gold has been that oscillator and change line. We haven't seen price trade above it, close above it since May. So that line, which is currently printing at, let's give you the exact number here. That's important. 1940, 1940. If we can see a close above 1941, we'll call it out there. Then we're going to see move to 1964. But if price can close above 1964, then we're off to the races. But we have to pay attention. Watch out for that potential TD9 count top because the silver contract just generated that signal. Today will become bar number eight. Bar number nine is likely going to complete tomorrow. The only way it doesn't complete tomorrow is if price were to close below 2196. That would be quite a move to the downside. So we're going to get a TD9 count top that completes between today and Thursday inside of high ho silver. The same is true with regard to the GDX. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, uh, folks. Still the mixed bag out there. We've got about eight requests in so far. Thanks so much for uh, each of those. Let's uh, start to get to them. The first one is from uh, Dr. Copper. That's from Z Inside the Tiger Sen. Uh, what I've got up here is I've got 53 years worth of data, just so you can take a quick peek at the seasonal chart out here. Copper typically forms its bottom, its significant bottom for the year, right around October the 24th out there. What is today? Today is October the 17th out there. So a week from today is typically when you see the bottom in copper. We use that as a guideline. If we take a look at what's going on in the daily time frame, copper formed a buy the D point pattern. It did it back here on October 6th. That was when it generated a bull sash candle. The way that would get negated would be a close below the low of that candlestick pattern. That would be $3.54, 3.549. There's also a new profile that is formed out here, John. The That support level is 3.5458. So we use that it would as the level that would negate the uh, by the D point pattern out there. It's a bullish structured profile that's attempting to form. 3.588 is the center. That's also right around that oscillator and change line. If price can close above that, that would signal its intent to go target the top of the profile, John. That's at three dollars and sixty six cents. So the daily, it's got the buy the D point pattern. Price has held support. Problem is resistance is working here too. The issue that copper has. And as long as it stays below $3.58, 3.586 to be exact, which is the bottom of a hammer candle, that is the B point of an A to B equals CD to the downside. That's from May 26 out there. And as long as copper remains below 3.586, that A to B equals CD pattern is in play. And that A to B equals CD would take us back to $3.30. That's its weekly TD9 count breakout level. On a monthly time frame, you've got the doctor that's pulled back into its bullish structured support zone. That support zone is between 350, I'm sorry, 335 and 351 out there. That's what I see when I take a look at Dr. Copper. Quickly, if we take a look at the 30-minute time frame chart, see if there's anything else that is out here that I can share with you, and there really isn't. Might be pulling back to 350. 3.569, that's its green oscillator and change line. So the daily looks pretty good and remains looking good unless price closed below 3.5458. And the weekly, you need to see a uh, close above 3.586 to get rid of that potential. It doesn't even get rid of it, quite frankly, but at least will calm it down a bit. 
and that's at 3.586 level. So, Mr. Z in the den, I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for. If not, let me know, and I'll be happy to get to that. Coda wanted to take a look at natural gas. We'll just take a look at these three charts out here, the uh, daily, the weekly, and the monthly. Natural gas trading below um, its uh, profile level. Trading below its oscillator and change line, it is suggesting a further pullback. Pullback to where? Well, I'd say 3.012 or 2.909. 3.012 is the bottom of the weekly profile. 2.909 is the weekly oscillator and change line. I don't really have any other areas of support on the daily time frame other than to suggest that maybe price pulls back to its swing point, which is back on September the 26th out there. If we take a look at the monthly time frame for natural gas, the monthly time frame last week completed a TD9 count bottom. If you see natural gas close below on a monthly basis, 2.796, it says wait until... Wait until next February before you start looking for more bottoms inside of natural gas. Now, Stevie, how'd you come up with wait until February? I came up with the February because I've taken pokes at natural gas a few times here and have, um, you know, have not liked the outcome. Uh, if we take a look at natural gas just simply from a seasonal standpoint, you've got 32 years worth of uh, data. If we come all the way back here, when does natural gas seasonally typically make it significant bottom and the answer to that question is right here around february 19th between february 14th and february 19th so around the second third week of uh, february is when we typically see natural gas perform well what are its worst months its worst months november and december at least that's how it's been on average over the last 32 years so my suggestion is let's stop looking at natural gas. Let's wait until February or so because this thing's been just simply a consolidation sideways little booger out there. And if you just take a look at that weekly chart, you can see that sideways consolidation. You can also see how $3.41 has been a key level of resistance. Maybe if price gets above that, we come back and take a look at it. Otherwise, let's uh, wait to come back to that fishing pond till next year. Let's go to the next request out here. This is coming in from Coda. He wants to take a look at SWN. If we take a look at it, it's having a beautiful day. It's going against a previous high from back on September 1. That did volume back there of 18 million shares. So far today, inside of SWN, you are at 5 million shares in two hours of trading. Five times three, that's 15 million. It's got similar type volume to that high from September 5th. You'd love to see it close today above 688. However, and it's an important however. Today will become bar number eight of a TD9 count. That says a TD9 count should form in ticker symbol SWN and do that between today and Thursday out there. So uh, that's the cool thing. It may form a top, maybe it doesn't. It will generate that pattern, but that ought to help you out. Now, on a weekly time frame, we can see that price is trying to get up to the 714 level. It's only with a swing point that has volume on a weekly basis from September 1st of 70 million shares out there. So far, we've done 20 million, but we're only a day and a few hours into it. So we really got to come back to that. But that could set up an A to B equal CD to the upside. Still, 714 becomes a resistance point out there. And of course, on the daily time frame, you could get a nice big A to B equal CD to the upside as well. I just say caution at this stage here and watch for that TD9 count pattern, which could then just take us back to a support level, which would be the oscillator and change line at this moment in time. That's currently priced at about 660. So everything looks wonderful here. We just got to be concerned, Coda, about that TD9 count. So watch between today and Thursday and then watch the short term time frame charts, because if they generate the topping signal, then we probably have at least a short term top. That's unlike today. We don't have that topping signal. Here's a 30 minute chart. Here's a TD9 count top. It was negated immediately. Tells us that uh, SWN, Southwest Energy, wants to continue to move higher out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to that ticker symbol. The next one is TPL. So let's, uh, let's see here. I think I've been through all Nope, I don't. I've got TPL. It should be right up. Oh, I don't. There was light sweet crude. Somebody wanted light sweet crude, I believe, as well. Uh, I didn't write that down, but I know that I've got it in the chart here. So we take a look at light sweet crude. What do we have? We've got price that's dealing with resistance right now. This is the December contract. That resistance area is 85.74. If price can close above it for two consecutive sessions, we ought to see a run up to the 91.25 level. In the case of the weekly time frame chart, also consolidates with inside its profile. Right now, it's dealing with the center of that profile at 86.30. If we can clear that level, 9094 is where it would set its sights. 9035 is a resistance spot on the monthly time frame. 
for Lightspeed Crude. You've just got to consolidate with inside its profile as well out there. So Lightspeed Crude basically consolidated with inside of profile levels. Not much further for me to report there. Let's go to the next request out here. This one is for TPL. Uh, what did I do? I went to the wrong tab. Nice job, Stevo. Nice job there. What tab did I select? It's got the spot volatilities coming up. Is this the blank charts tab? Yeah, it probably is. Okay. All right, sorry about that, folks. Uh, we got a short delay here. We got a traffic issue on Stevie's system. We got to close that out. When we close that out, then we'll go back to where was it Stevie was going to go. Well, I tell you where I'm going to go. We're going to go put up TPL, XLY, Goldman Sachs, and URA. Those are the four requests that we still have in the system. Oh, and Nancy's getting in on it. She wants to take a look at Microsoft, which we will definitely do. We'll be right back. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at Texas Pacific Land Corporation. TPL is a ticker symbol. Now, TPL is going to form bar number eight today. 
of a TD9 count as it approaches its TD9 count breakdown resistance level at 1959.93. This suggests that we should see a top between today and Thursday out here. That top should take us back towards its oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 1878. At the same time, the daily is getting ready to form a topping signal. The weekly is approaching the top of its weekly profile. And that's up at the 1960 level. We're trading right now in 1950.71. And on a monthly time frame, well, guess what? It's also approaching a resistance level. That resistance level is the top of its profile. The top of that profile is at 1962.82 out there. So looks to me like uh, TPL is going to form a short-term top sometime over the next couple of days out there, get some type of retracement, maybe try to reload and try to take out those highs. Um, as far as support levels, I'd start to get a little bit worried if price got below 1834.55 out there. Then, because you couldn't bust them up, price is likely going to try to bust them down and get down to 1734. So that's what I see when I take a look at TPL, Coda. You also want to take a look at the XLY. So let's go take a look at uh, those charts see what they're communicating to us and right now you're trading out at about 161.72 this is the uh, consumer discretionary sector out here what do you have you've got a td9 count bottom that basically has led to a sideways consolidation and sideways consolidation looks pretty much like this we can draw in that rectangle out here i just call it a well actually i could go all the way up here can't i yeah so there's your consolidation at the top Here's your consolidation at the uh, bottom. Uh, you're likely going to go target the top of that consolidation, which is somewhere somewhere around the 163.86 level. So you got the daily bottom. The weekly, no bottom, but price is trying to get back inside its weekly profile. It accomplishes that task with a close above 160.80. If it closes above 160.80, that gets us back likely to the top of that um, consolidation in 163-ish zone out there. On a monthly time frame chart out here, no damage, no top, just price testing support. Happens to be the old resistance level, which was the top of that profile, 160.13. So XLY, just in a consolidation, having a nice TD9 count bottom. Coda, I hope that that helps you out, and thank you again for all of those requests. The next request coming in from Jambalaya wants to take a look at Goldman Sachs. And the question is price targets out there. Where are those price targets? Well, this is a TD9 count bottom pattern out here. So that becomes the price target. Bar number, the bar following bar number nine, that was on October 3rd, Jambalaya. That low is the key critical low, which is 304.39. If price were to close below 304.39, then Goldman Sachs would likely head lower. We'd have to look at the other time frame charts, which I'll do here momentarily. Right now, though, price is finding support at its oscillator and change line, but it's real resistance. Goldman Sachs on any move higher, that TD9 count bottom, that has led to a sideways ish type move out there it's counter trend move if it's only a counter trend where it would find resistance would be at 320 62 the center of its daily bullish structured profile jambalaya on the weekly time frame you got a good old-fashioned consolidation with inside profile levels even beyond that uh, but that ranges from 309 65 up to 332.99 consolidated with inside the monthly uh, the monthly says because we're trading below last month's low out there Odds favor may be pulling back to the 291.32 level. But we won't make that call because right now we've got a TD9 count bottom. That gives us that key threshold level at 304.39. Uh, only if price gets below that will that 291 come into play out here. So Goldman Sachs, just a uh, bottom, but a sideways-ish type consolidation out there. So Jambalaya, I hope that that helps you out with regard to Goldman Sachs. And thank you for taking the time to put in a request. Lee B., Wants to take a look at uranium. URA is a ticker symbol out there. So let's go see what URA is doing at the moment. Trading out at about 25.45. It's got that nice hammer candle that formed about two weeks ago. This is after forming a Rhodes Mintum Indicator top. Do I have a bottom? I don't have a bottom. But we do have that hammer candle from the trading day of October the 4th. Got close to, but not all the way down to its breakout level of 24.09. And since then, we've just simply had kind of a sideways-ish type move. Now, the key level of resistance here, LB, is going to be that green oscillator and change line. The daily print as we speak is 26.17. If price could close above that, you'd be above a green oscillator and change line. That would be bullish. You would be above the center of its bullish structure profile. That too would be bullish. That would take us up to 28.02. That's not the scene right now. The scene right now is support is held, but resistance is also out there. That resistance up at 26.17. The weekly time frame, a TD9 count top. 
to the neck out top is take a price right back to the support level. That's that green oscillator and change line. As long as price remains above that on a closing basis, that being 2526, we really have a neutral type signal on the weekly time frame. On the monthly, you've got a good old fashioned consolidation. The buyers are lined up at 2010, the sellers are lined up at 3016. So likely you're headed towards that 3016 level. But 26 and change is going to be the key area to be watching, observing first. Again, that was that daily oscillator and change line. So LB, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. I hope that that helps you out with that instrument. Next instrument coming in from Nancy. Nancy wants to take it at Microsoft. Nancy's got some puts or calls. I don't recall what you had out here at Microsoft for the next couple of Fridays. But let me just share with you what the Microsoft charts are communicating to you and I, at least as of Tuesday at 11.36 in the morning. And what are they communicating to us? They're saying, hey, Nancy, we got a TD9 count top out here in the daily time frame. That completed a couple of days ago. That was on October the 13th, Friday the 13th. Only a close above that high, which is at 333.83, would negate that signal and tell us about a further move higher. Now, there's also resistance at 337.40. That's a TD9 count breakdown level, 335.14. So that's your strong resistance up at the top out here. Support is down between 324.66 and about 326 and change out there. The, the uh, latter is the oscillator and change line. The former was the bottom of its daily profile. Inside of the weekly time frame, a TD9 count top took price back to breakout support. It's been trading sideways ever since. It's struggling to overtake its oscillator and change line, currently priced at 336.63. Even if it can overcome that, it's got resistance up at 340.21. I'd say 340.21 is a key resistance level that if closed above, would take us higher. Monthly chart looks pretty good out there, but it's the daily and the weekly that are giving you the conniptions, so to speak, out here. So watch that TD9 count top on the daily time frame. Those resistance levels above it, if you can get above that, then we're likely headed higher. Again, it being 333.83, which would then lead you to resistance at 335.14 and at 337.40. So, Nancy, hope that helps you out with regard to Microsoft. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. The next request coming in from Nitram inside the Tigers. Then let's take a look at Intel. Ticker symbol there is INTZ. So let's get those charts pulled up on our screen. See what Intel is doing. Intel uh, trading out at about 3601. Right now, it is trading above the top of its daily profile. It has a TD9 count top. That TD9 count top took it back to its first level or second level of support. That again being the top of the profile. Price were to close below 35.54 Nitram, we'd see a move back towards 34.38. That's a TD9 count breakout level. But right now, support is held. The signal, I would say, is more neutral than it is anything else on a daily time frame for Intel. The weekly chart says, I'm just consolidating with inside my bullish structured profile, Stevie, and I want to go target 3927. Well, if that's what it says it wants to do, I think that's what it wants to do. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at 
pfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back. We're taking a look at the uh, charts for Intel out here. Again, the weekly and the monthly look really good. There's nothing bearish that I see there. On the daily time frame, we do have that TD9 count top. So the weekly and monthly say price wants to move higher. If that's going to come, we need to see price close above 3703. That's a TD9 count high. If that unfolds, then we see price start to hit those targets. Otherwise, you've just got a sideways move as we speak right now. So I hope that helps you out, Nitram. Let's go take a look at your second request. That was for a ticker symbol HZO out here and HZO it's got that uh, big A to B equals CD to the downside on the daily time frame I don't have any other bottoming signal and that gets us down to about the $24 ish type area this is marine max out here not a, a ton of volume that gets traded prices below it's got a TD9 count top and prices below its weekly profile if we were to close above 3124 at least it gets back inside the profile might be targeting 3213 out there otherwise 3781 is where it wants to target now on a monthly time frame hco marine max has pulled back to its uh bullish structured support area that zone that area is between 2668 and 2992 so i don't see a bottom out here in the daily time frame um and the weekly says caution will robinson that's what the charts say as we speak right now so hope that helped you out with that as well nitram uh inside the tiger's den who was it mcguppy wanted to know the answer to this question, which of the two stocks is weaker, Apple or Berkshire Hathaway? If we take a look at Apple, you've got a TD9 count top that has held support. Support being the bottom of its daily profile, 176.54, and its red oscillator and change line. So its daily signal is neutral. The weekly signal, which had a TD9 count top, pulled back and tested and rejected breakout support at 170.42. It's in a bullish structured profile. It suggests a move up to 183.27. And on the monthly time frame, no top in place, price above the top of its profile. So it is still bullish. It's lost its momentum, but maybe it's gonna get that momentum back. So if you're asking me, does Apple look weak? The answer would be no. The tops have taken price back to support. Support is held as we speak, and we ought to see Apple try to make a run for the 183.27 mark. What happens if price closed below 176? 28 or thereabouts. Well, then I would say we're likely headed to 170.82. But those are the charts for Apple. Let's go take a look at those charts for Berkshire Hathaway, BRK, BRK dash B underscore B dot B, some kind of B out there. So if we take a look at his daily time frame, what do we have? What do we have? Let me open this up a little further here. <laughs> 
Well, you got a TD9 count bottom, and that remains in effect unless price were to close below 342.13. It's been tested a few times. Oh, no, only once, uh, twice. Um, so you've got a you've got that bottom, but here you can see that oscillator and change line. Uh, McGuppy is acting as strong resistance. So I'm going to consider this, this is neutral, but weaker than the chart that we looked at for Apple when we took a look at its daily time frame out here. Um, is this weak enough to sell? Because you're looking to sell one of these two. And, uh, you know, this has got a valid bottom, just like Apple does. The weekly chart for Berkshire Hathaway, it's got to sell the D point. I see that. Price pulled right back to support as well. That was the bottom of his profile, 338. And the weekly the monthly chart does have a, a Rhodes momentum indicator top. But price would need to close on a monthly basis below its oscillator and change line, which is currently at 348.13, to suggest that we're headed lower, lower being like 299 to 308. So when it comes to the daily and the weekly, for Apple and Berkshire Hathaway, you gave me two and said, which one is weaker? Stevie's going to say, choose a third one. Because I don't know that these are the ones that I'd be looking at to go short, at least not just yet, at least not as of 11.46 a.m. So I hope that helped you out there, um, uh, McGuppy. And uh, if there's something else that you see, let me know what it is. I can retake a look at those uh, charts out there. So I hope that provides you with the information we're looking for. John in the uh, John C. in the Tigers Den wants to take a look at NBDA, NBDA. So let's go pull up those charts, see what they're communicating to us. I believe they have gapped down this morning out here. Let's take a look and make sure. And BDA, come on, populate out there. Yeah, it was a gap to the downside, which found support at the bottom of its new daily profile out there, new in the past couple of days. And that key level out there is at 437.24. Now, price closed below 437.24. Now, this has a sell the D point pattern. So it generated the sell the D point pattern two days ago. And now price is pulled back and it's tested support. That could be the extent of its move lower out there. Now, today's candle shows up as a hammer, but it's also a gap to the downside. So it's really not a hammer, at least in my opinion, because you got to fill in that gap, so to speak, out there on a weekly time frame. What do we have going on inside of NVIDIA? Rhodes Mentum Indicator Top. Good old-fashioned consolidation in between profile levels, between 408.99, 472.89. On a monthly time frame, you will complete a TD9 count topping pattern this month. This would suggest that price would pull back to the 3804 level. That happens to be the bottom of its monthly profile and right around its oscillator and change line. So 3804 is its number out there. If that's going to come to fruition, John C., you need to see a close below that daily support level, at least at 437.24. But for the most part, NVIDIA has pretty much just got a good old-fashioned sideways-ish type consolidation out there. So, John, I hope that that provided you with the information that you were looking for there. And thank you for taking the time for a request. Let me just check the email, see if anybody else has written in. Looks like we've got one here from uh, Nicholas. Nicholas writes in, good morning, Steve. Uh, would you go over IWM RTY for a TNA trade? I, I, I will. So I'll just put up the RTY right now. Um, Let's put up the RTY, 1223. So you've got, uh, Nicholas, you probably didn't hear the beginning of the uh, show, but you got a nice buy, uh, Rhodes momentum indicator bottom inside of the uh, daily time frame chart for the Russell 2000 equity future contract yesterday. It's also inside a bullish structured profile as soon as it comes up, and its price target is going to be 1824. So do you take a trade now? You're at 1787 and it's 1824. I don't know. On a weekly time frame out there, the weekly time frame formed a TD9 count bottom. That remains in effect unless we see it close below the low of that pattern at 172070 out there. Monthly chart not really providing us with a ton of information. I'm cautious on suggesting that you take a long trade now, knowing that there's also resistance right here at the high that formed on October 11th. That was the high of that Three River Evening Star pattern in 180270. So you'd buy it on a retracement or a pullback. And that would be a pullback towards 1741.50, 1747 out there. But right now, you've got a solid bottom. Um, let's take a, well, I don't know how long it's going to take to pull this up. Let me just try this. We've got about 30 seconds before we go to break. I can, oh, I know where I am. Maybe I can do that and do it quicker. We'll try day trading. 
here. Just going to look at what's going on on the real intraday charts here for the Russell 2000. Let's see. We'll try to stick on, stick on. We'll try to stay uh, on uh, through this uh, till we get real close to the edge of that break. And the music's going to start playing in about four seconds out here. So there's the daily. Just looking for any kind of short-term signals. Uh, that you want to be aware of out there. Uh, TD9 count top. It's going to complete here at 12 noon on a 15 minute time frame. That's all that I see out there. So from a short term standpoint, whatever that high is by 12 noon, watch that high. If there's a 15 minute close above that, Russell 2000 still wants to continue motoring along. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We're playing that game with, uh, with uh, was it Fletch uh, or um, McGuppy? McGuppy. Uh, the game of McGuppy wants is which of these two is likely to head lower, and those two being Verizon and uh, Kratos Defense and Security Systems. Well, in the case of Verizon, 
I see a confirmed by the D point pattern that form of this bullish hammer back on the trading day of October 6th. So you need to see a close below that hammer candle at 3014 to suggest that it is weak. Now, counter trend moves on this thing have run into resistance where they should. That's at 3174. So price should make its way up to that level. If pricing closes above 3174, this is likely more than a counter trend move out there. So that would help answer your question there. McGuppy, you've got the bottom that's in place out there. Now the question is, what is the rally going to do? Can it take out that resistance level? On a weekly time frame, you uh, need a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom pattern. That would be the Rhodes Mentum Indicator signal. You're going to get bar number eight this month here for Verizon. That says you could form a TD9 account bottom uh, by um, November, November, December time frame. So which of these two are weaker? Well, this one's got that daily bottom, and I would feel this would be stronger if it can get above that red oscillator and change on the weekly time frame, 31 and 45 cents out there. Let's go take a look at Kratos Defense. K-T-O-S is the ticker symbol. What do we see here? I see bar number eight that will complete if this, oh, it's going to. So bar number eight is going to complete today inside of Kratos. Um, this suggests that you could form a TD9 count top between today and Friday out there. The weekly needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm a Rhodes indicator top. The monthly is going to complete a TD9 count top. I'd wait for the bearish reversal candle on the weekly. This looks like it has more potential, but I'd let that confirm for you, McGuppy. Folks, thanks so much for all your requests out there. Have a terrific Tuesday. Be safe out there, and I'll see you back here at 11 o'clock on wonderful Wednesday. Take care, folks.